dollar Republican bill from the moderates compared to the one point nine trillion dollar bill that would be hopefully passed with 50 Democratic votes through reconciliation. Right. So fourteen hundred dollar payments, uh, an unemployment extension of four hundred dollars per week. The Republican bill would only until be three, September until September. The Republicans would keep it at three hundred dollars a week until March. And then just until March. Yes. Three hundred fifty billion dollars in state and local aid, which would not be in that moderate Republican bill at all. And that's key to helping us avoid the recession lasting longer school and vaccine money. The vaccine money is uh, basically identical in the Republican bill. Um, And again, also the GOP checks would only be a thousand dollars and tens of millions of Americans would be cut off because um, they they basically are trying to cut it off at fifty thousand dollars of income eligibility as opposed to the seventy five k for the fourteen hundred dollars in Biden's bill. So this is insane. The gulf is immense, and so as long as Biden's uh, bipartisan performance is just that a perform- performance, I will have zero issues with him really um, because th- that's still exceeding my expectations for him and his presidency at this point. Child tax credit, $120 billion in the Biden plan, zero in the Republicans plan. Rental assistance, $35 billion in the Biden plan, zero in the Republican plan. Uh, Child care, uh, $40 billion in the um, in Biden's plan, 20 in the Republican plan. Um, There's more, but those are the big um, uh, nutrition, public transport, veterans and other policy changes, $140 billion in the Biden plan. Zero in the Republican plan. There's a lot of this. And um, uh, the the further we can go on and hear about how the Republicans are just not interested for apparently no reason other than just because uh, in providing support for the American public. uh, That's a good thing. All right. Yeah. And Biden's plan is still not enough. It's still not enough. It's it's still not enough. And it is, um, you know, it remains to be seen. If um, we're going to get more support as the year goes on in that second reconciliation bill, but I, I myself go for the uh, get rid of the filibuster. This just in apparently uh, Joe Manchin on um, on Harris's uh, interview in West Virginia. Quote, there's no apologies needed. I mean, we're all in this. (laughs) We understand that it was a mistake. They made a mistake and we understand we move on. You can't dwell on those things. Good for uh, Joe Manchin. Uh, And I think, you know, frankly, uh, when um, the governor of his state came out and. Who's basically the mirror image of him on the Republican side, right? Like he's a Democrat in name only that Jim Justice is a Republican ish. Like they're both two sides of the same coin, um, basically teetering on the edge of the other's party. Um, Let's go over a quick review of, of where we are with Joe Biden, right? The. Jury's still out about this $1.9 trillion bill. Um, Let's just start off by saying should have been $2,000, not $1,400. Got fast and loose. What's the point of that? You know, what's the difference between a $2.2 trillion bill and a $1.9 trillion bill? There is still this mentality that the American public actually like sort of, there's some type of magical threshold that Americans start to pay attention to. Nobody even remembers Three, four trillion dollars uh, in March. Nobody, nobody, and nobody can actually outline how that money was spent. I'm talking about your average American on the on the street. And so these numbers are not as intimidating to the American public as apparently uh, the politicos seem to think there is. Two thousand dollars was just the what was pitched. So you just do that. Um, yeah. And right. and look, I don't know what they think the downside of it could possibly be we had the lowest rate of poverty in in years upon years during those like four months uh in the wake of those payments and what's wrong with that (laughs) but people don't uh, feel like they have to go to work that jobs they don't like there's not the economic anxiety that uh, alan greenspan so helpfully um laid out in some of his fed testimony uh, almost 20 years ago that is necessary to keep the um the economy running in their in their minds um here is uh Mehdi Hassan uh, did a um a rundown on uh, msnbc.com which i thought was pretty good 
uh, entitled How I Was Maybe Wrong About Biden. Because, look, it's very early. The only thing that we have to compare is the first 10 days of the Obama administration, where they were already talking about cuts to Social Security. They were already talking about, um, you know, uh, at least doing a, a head nod to a, a turn to austerity in the future. And this concern that they could be spending too much on the financial crisis. Um, he has signed more, according to Medi, uh, 40 executive uh, orders. Including rejoining the uh, Paris climate change, canceling the Keystone XL pipeline, ordering the conservation around 30 percent of all federal land and water by 2030 and the suspension of new oil and gas leases on federal land and water. Some of there was still um, some leases that were approved. He established a White House office domestic climate policy, made uh, climate change a national security foreign policy priority. Um, says things like um, we should uh, every major economist thinks we should be investing in deficit spending in order to generate economic growth as opposed to Obama's austerity promotion. Um. On day one of his presidency, Biden ended the Muslim ban, canceled construction of the border wall, included undocumented immigrants in the census count, blocked the deportation of Liberian refugees, issued a memo preserving and fortifying the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program, that's DACA, shielding 650,000 immigrants from deportation, announced a 100-day moratorium on all deportations, attempted to be blocked by a Trump judge, but I don't think that uh, that can really actually function in that way, I think that's that moratorium is all in place, but for name, sent a bill to Congress offering a pathway to citizenship for around 11 million undocumented migrants, officially re- revoked the Trump's administration's zero tolerance program, which allowed for the kidnapping of children at the border. Now, with that said, there's still, according to our friend Ronald Reagan, uh, the immigration lawyer calls into this program as a podcast called Deconstructed. There's still a couple of executive orders that Trump issued dealing with visas that are no brainers to be reversed and have yet to be reversed. And he himself, as a small immigration lawyer, has multiple clients who are stuck in Mexico because of this, who should be getting a green card. So understand that there's a lot of stuff that, uh, that uh, Joe Biden has done. There's a lot more he could do just within the realm. of, And he's he's only suspending those those contracts on federal lands for gas and drilling. He could cancel a lot of the ones that they rushed in at the end of the Trump era. Jury still out on a lot of these things. But uh, it's important that we have a perspective on this, both the good and the bad. Fortunately, nothing ugly quite yet. He rescinded the Trump administration's counterfactual 1776 commission. Um and the student and, debt thing is egregious that we still have not canceled any student debt. That's student an absolute debt. abomination. He could do that with the stroke of a pen. And there's no reason for Biden not to do so. None whatsoever. Did order um, the federal contractors um, to uh, feds to have a $15 minimum wage. He ordered the Department of Labor to develop plans to ensure 15 uh, minimum wage uh, for federal employees, I should say. He asked the department to clarify rules establishing that workers have a federally guaranteed right to refuse employment that will jeopardize their health. So you can't be forced to come in to uh, work and you're still eligible for unemployment insurance. Um, he has asked senators to recruit civil rights attorneys and defense lawyers for judgeships. We talked to uh, Brian Fallon again from Demand Justice. That was something that that uh, progressives have been working on, making sure less corporate uh, attorneys getting uh, judgeships. Um, they announced their intention to renew U.S. relations with Palestinian leadership and Palestinian people. However, they have left the um, embassy in Jerusalem. Uh, problematic. They've appointed uh, the dovish Robert Malley as a special uh, U.S. envoy uh, to Iran. But they've also been saying, you know, a bunch of junky things about Iran having to make the first move. We'll see how that plays out. They, um, the Director of National Intelligence will re- release unclassified information on the killing of Jamal Khashoggi. Uh, Biden ordered a pause on weapon sales to Saudi Arabia and the UAE. We'll see how long that goes. There's plenty of other things he could be doing going uh, past the public option, Medicare for all. We've talked about that a lot. 
the um, ban on federal private prisons. Mostly ICE and the Department of Homeland Security are using federal prisons and they're using that for immigrants. That should be uh, banned as well. Um, We mentioned the checks. There are some members of their administration today. Tom Vilsack is getting uh, confirmed as secretary of uh, agriculture. Horrible pick. That said, progressives are very happy about sort of like the second tier picks that will be staffing a lot of these agencies. So there's a, you know, there is some reason to be optimistic, but there, uh, I think the watchwords, I think you said it best, uh, Emma, cautiously optimistic is the way that we should proceed. And it's good to see people um, holding the Biden administration to account for even these small things, because as they do these, you know, on some level, Joe Biden, and we've been saying this for since he won the nomination, Joe Biden is my second favorite type of politician. My favorite is one who uh, agrees with the policies that I want. My second favorite is a cipher who is going to do as how they are pushed. And one of the obstacles to pushing um, Joe Biden is that they're worried if they do progressive things that they're going to pay some type of price. And I think they're starting to see that they can do these things and get away with it. We're going to take a a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk about um, AOC's um, really harrowing account that she gave last night of the Capitol uh, attack. Okay, we're back. Uh, So, Emma, AOC was on Instagram last night. She was. um, And she was on for, I believe, a live of of almost up to 90 minutes describing her experience at the Capitol. And she um, revealed that she is a survivor of sexual assault and how that informed what happened to her. Because I'll be real, guys, um, if I were in her position and I was alone or I didn't have security around me and there was a mob of all these people breaking in and she would be the number one or number two target I could think of that they would direct their anger and ire towards, I would think there was a very significant chance that I would either first be killed um, or I would be raped first. So this is how uh, she describes her experience and some of the trauma that that brought up in her bathroom and i immediately realized that i shouldn't have gone into the bathroom i should have jumped in the closet and so i i opened the door when all of a sudden i hear that whoever was trying to get inside got into my office um and then i realized that it's too late that it's too late for me to get into the closet. And so I, I go back in and I, I hide back in, um, in the bathroom behind the door. And then I just start to hear these yells of, where is she? Where is she? And I just thought to myself, they got inside. And so I hide behind my door like this, like I'm here and the bathroom door starts going like this, like the bathroom door is behind me or rather in front of me. And I'm like this and the door hinges right here. And I just hear, where is she? Where is she? And um, this was the moment where I thought everything was over. Um, and the weird thing about moments like these is that you lose all sense of time. Um, in retrospect, 
Um, maybe it was forced.